The auto industry has spent over $100 billion in self-driving cars. Is this ever going to hit the streets or is this just a scam? The auto industry is rapidly moving toward a future of driverless cars. And one of the main arguments in favor of the new technology is that it'll make driving safer. But here's a reality check. Google's parent company, Alphabet, and their self-driving vehicle called Waymo quietly laid off quite a bit of their staff this week. In October 22, Argo AI, an autonomous vehicle company, shut down their business. They burst on the scene in 2017, stacked with a billion dollar investment before being absorbed by Ford and Volkswagen. Sadly, more than 2,000 employees lost their jobs. Chinese company Bandu cut jobs from their autonomous driving unit as prospects for profits were small enough after years of investments and many of the industry's most promising efforts have met the same fate in recent years. Drive AI, Voyage, Zooks, and Uber's self-driving division. Many other companies have met a similar fate. Tesla's autopilot was supposed to be the first self-driving production car. In truth, it is a suite of advanced driver assistance system features offered by Tesla that amounts to an SAE International Level 2 vehicle automation. Now, many car manufacturers offer what they call Level 3 automation and can make drivers safer on the road. However, this is not self-driving cars. Only Mercedes-Benz has been approved for Level 3 with the Drive Pilot system and it is being tested in Nevada as we speak. The Drive Pilot system will not be available available for all vehicles, just specific ones, and Mercedes will not be allowed to retrofit it to previous older vehicles. Level 5 automation is self-driving, full self-driving, with no steering wheel, no pedals, and we are nowhere near that. The $100 billion investment in self-driving cars is starting to look like a scam. Why exactly? Let's look at the facts. But before we do, I want to remind you to subscribe and click that little bell for notifications so you don't miss anything. We give you more than car reviews and first looks of new vehicles. We give you car smarts because knowledge is power. There is a ton of media on autonomous, driverless, and self-driving cars. The pressers, news, and marketing machines from Google, Apple, and car companies are turning up the heat, making promises of self-driving cars that are all electric and are going to save lives and change the world. Now to the facts. Automobile crash sensors do not work when they are covered with ice, snow, or obscured by other weather conditions. I live in an area that has frequent snow, some sleet, and even hail. This makes even active cruise control and other common modern safety features not function. That means that all the amazing safety features in crash sensors can't do their job and save you from a crash. This is why self-driving cars were always tested around Southern California and Arizona, where good weather conditions are common. A friend of mine was riding in a self-driving Uber recently. It started to rain and the vehicle then pulled over and he had to call another Uber with a human driver to pick him up to get him to his destination. That's crazy. All computer hardware fails at some point. It develops bugs or glitches or just plain slows down to the point where it does not handle the task as it was built. There will be failures, and the first time a customer's autonomous vehicle runs someone over, which has already happened with test vehicles, it will likely be caught on multiple video cameras from multiple angles, and that technology will be shelved for another 10 years. Insurance companies are concerned when it comes to getting paid for losses because autonomous car and software companies will not want to be responsible in a crash. And someone has to be at fault and take responsibility for the failure of a car. Tech companies will just blame each other. And this is certainly an issue that has not been resolved and will remain a problem. Driverless cars are an enormous liability and challenge because driving is simply dangerous due to a massive number of variables. As cars become more like computers, they can be hacked like computers. The future risks to self-driving cars range from data breaches to hijack critical systems, backdooring the car's network, extortion, and more. Criminal hackers could target the car itself, the backend servers supporting it, or the outside systems that communicate with the car, like smart traffic lights. The possibilities are endless. A criminal could steal personal information by hacking the car's Wi-Fi or cellular data, or compromising a third-party server provider. 
Ransomware could seize control of a car's function or disable it altogether until the owner or the automaker pays the ransom. It's also possible to carry this out on a larger scale if an attacker is able to find a model-specific vulnerability. This may sound like I've gone too far, but this type of ransomware happens daily in other industries. Remember, driverless cars will rely heavily on vehicle to vehicle or V to V and vehicle to grid V to X communications to navigate any successful breach of one of those outside systems could be used to manipulate the car. In a recent interview from Autoblog, past Google self-driving researcher Anthony Lewandowski said, our driverless future is starting to look so distant that even some of the most fervent believers have turned to centers. You'd be hard pressed to find another industry that's invested so many dollars in research and development and that has developed so little. Forget about the profits. What's the combined revenue of all the robo-taxi, robo-truck, robo-whatever companies? Is it a million dollars? Maybe. I think it's more like zero, end quote. While Tesla has argued that its current system represents a working prototype, Musk has continued to blur the lines between demos and reality. And now with claims of falsifying video, the courts and the federal government will have to decide the truth. While the industry's biggest names continue to project optimism, the emerging consensus is that the world of self-driving vehicles might have to wait decades longer or an eternity. If you like this video, give it a like and subscribe for more videos like this one. If you have any questions or comments, because you always do, I'll be happy to answer them. You can support me by buying me a cup of coffee. The link is in the description, plus all the links for the website, social media, book, and our podcast. I'm Lauren Fix. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, check out my website, Car Coach Reports, for more car smarts. I'm Lauren Fix for Local Now. I'm Lauren Fix, and you can find this information on my website, carcoachreports.com and dailyflashshow.com.